Well, I'd give it like, if we're talking Yelp ratings, I'd give it like an 8.2 out of 10. <laughs> Welcome back to my podcast. So I've gotten a lot of questions on Instagram and wherever lately of what my rig is, what I shoot with day to day. So I wanted to break it down for you guys. Real quick general rundown on the surface of everything. I've got the Atomos Ninja V here mounted to the small rig little handle thing there. Don't know what it is exactly, but you can type it in Amazon, find it perfectly. I've got a little fan, fan shang cage because small rig took it off of Amazon, their cage. So we've got that. And then I've got the EOS R, and mainly I'm always going to have this Sigma 18 to 35 1.8 crop lens. So the main selling point of the Atomos, or what got me at least, is being able to shoot 10 bit 422. And some of you might not need that. I probably don't need that, but I want that extra punch. I want that flexibility and in color grading, in post. I mean, and also shooting Pro Red. Another thing is being able to shoot to a SSD instead of the SD card that's internal, that's like 64 gigabytes or 128 if you're lucky. I've got a terabyte on here. You can buy two terabyte, you can buy 500 gigabytes. The cool part that I love about the Atomos, so you can preload LUTs onto the Atomos just as a preview. So it doesn't film with that LUT that you've selected on. So like once you press the button or once you select that LUT, it's not like that's locked in stone forever. It just overlays that, so it's still recording log footage, but you can just preview what everything would look like and kind of get the mood for things. And for me, it just gives me a little bit of a confidence booster. It makes the shot look really cool and makes me feel like I'm doing good things. What are some other good things about the Atomos? You've got false colors, you've got zebras, you've got lumetri scopes, you've got focus peaking. You've got a, a, a whole array of different settings and features to make your shooting experience easier. Um, but that's pretty much it as far as the Atomos goes. And you've got the cage, the rig, the handle, whatever. A couple different reasons why I've got that. The main reason, it looks cool. Because every filmmaker wants to look cool and they don't want to go there with a super small camera and be like, Hey guys, I'm a professional. But there's more reasons than just that. Uh, another huge reason about it is that it's... It, it, adds weight to your camera. I myself do a lot of handheld shots, so instead of things being super shaky, you kind of get more of a natural, personable wobble wave, whatever you want to call it. But it also makes it easier. You still have that option to shoot like this, like a traditional mirrorless camera, but I oftentimes will shoot low. I'll dangle, I'll get feet shots and let it do whatever using that Atomos, that thing coming in handy. So those kind of go hand in hand. I've got got it mounted right on the front of the handle just because it's it's most comfortable for me. If it was back here, I'd feel kind of weird. If it was back like on the, on the back of the handle, I'd feel kind of weird. So it's just most comfortable there for me. That's my personal preference. Great thing about this cage is you can, with these bolts here, you can slide it back and forth. And I used to have it so it's here and then I realized that it's a little bit more even and stable here. So it's not going to be fighting as much to be like, you know, doing all that. That's my cage setup. That's everything I've got there as far as the rig and the Atomos. Lenses. My almost all the time, like 95% of the time, I've got the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8. One downfall about it, it's a crop sensor lens. Why is it on a full frame camera? There's a little bit of a sacrifice that I had to take with it. I love the lens. It's kind of like the perfect focal length for me, but you have to either one, go into 4K, or stay in 1080 and turn on that movie crop mode that the EOS R has. With that being said, you can't get 60 frames a second. So no more slow-mo, definitely no 120p because Canon forgot to put that in there. If I wanna switch over to 60 frames, I'll throw on a different lens, either my 35 or my 85. But those are the three lenses that I stick to. So, with the R, there are a lot of questions of, is it good, is it bad? Do I get it, do I not? Now. There is the R5 that just got released that is like a superhero of all mirrorless cameras. I haven't looked up on the specs too much because it's been a lot of rumors and a lot of it's going to be this or it's going to be that and I just kind of ignore it and don't get my hopes up because I can't really afford it right now. With all these futuristic specs on the R5, that doesn't mean that the R is bad. I love the R. It's gotten me through Alaska, Arizona, Nashville, Vermont, wherever else the heck I've traveled. And it's always been there on my side. It's super compact, small, easy to travel with. You can rig it up, you can rig it down. I always keep it rigged because I'm extra and I like the attention and I like people to be like, whoa, what do you do? <laughs> Try to make YouTube videos.
The R has been fantastic. Canon's always got that color science that makes skin tones look perfect. It's sharp, it's super sharp, especially in 4K. Um, especially shooting ProRes in 4K with the Atomos. C-Log is always fantastic. I notice that sometimes it falls apart on the high and low ends um, when you're pushing the highlights and the shadows. That is my one complaint and it, it's not game changer. Uh, it's something that when you pixel peep you notice and the average client, the average person, the average viewer isn't really gonna take much notice or take much thought into it. So say that you either don't have the budget for a cinema camera or you're traveling or just don't like the thought of a big cinema camera. The EOS R is kind of like a perfect happy place for everything. It's not gonna be the top of the line cinema quality, but it's gonna be fantastic and it's not gonna be super bulky. It's gonna be kind of cute and cute and uh, compact. Easy to film with, easy to travel with. On top of that, you've got the autofocus, which eye tracking, I'm pretty sure is pretty phenomenal on it. There was an update a little while back that made it a lot more improved so i think it follows me pretty well it looks like it is on the screen right yeah I, I mean the battery time on it is excellent a lot of people say with the evf and all of that that the battery wears out but i mean i've shot for most of an entire day uh, being conscious of the battery turning on and off when i'm when i'm not using it but i've shot almost the entire day just on one of those lp e6 canon batteries so so that about wraps up what I wanted to share with you guys as far as my daily setup goes. My main focus was just to show you my day-to-day my -day rig and a couple things that I like, a couple things that I don't like about it. Of course, if you have any other questions, ask me. Feel free, message me, comment below, do whatever. Of course, I like talking about this stuff, so I'll answer every question that you have. But overall, I'd give it like, if we're talking Yelp ratings, I'd give it like an 8.2 out of 10. I think that's all.